Thank you, Nicolas. Good afternoon, everybody. Tuberculosis is the most common by mycobacterial infection. And although a slow reduction of its incidence in developed countries, it remains a major cause of morbidity and mortality in developing countries. Multidrug resistant and extensively drug resistant HIV associated TB and weak health care systems are major challenges. We are talking now about imaging modalities, a few words. Chest radiography plays always a major role in screening, diagnosis, and for evaluation of the response and the treatment of patients with TB. We have to remember that there are various radiograph radiographic appearances, including normal chest X-rays, or with mild or non-specific findings. And the correct diagnosis of pulmonary TB is um, about done in um, 50, half, half percent of cases. Um, computed tomography is usually required to detect fine uh, lesions overlooked on chest X-ray, to define equivocal lesions, to uh, explain and detect complications. It has also proven to be very helpful in judging the activity of tuberculosis and for evaluation of follow-up of complex diseases. This is an example of a typical um, well-defined dense uh, sensory lobular nodules with trimmed appearance. And uh, this was almost uh, um, totally um, missed on the chest X-ray equivalent. Now we move on to the description of primary and post-primary tuberculosis. There is an increased prevalence of primary tuberculosis. Most cases remain clinically unapparent, and that's why there are numerous unrecognized cases. The typical findings in primary tuberculosis is parenchymal involvement. It consists in a focal infiltrate or a small constellation, usually supraoral and sublobular. It mainly involves middle and lower lobes due to their greatest ventilation and less often the entire segment of the upper lobe. A resistance to conventional antibacterial uh, therapy should suggest a diagnosis. This parenchymal involvement is associated with enlarged lymph nodes that are usually unilateral to the parenchymal involvement. It uh, mainly concerns a paratracheal area, right paratracheal, tracheobronchial, and subcoronal areas as hilar areas. Typically, with CT, after contrast administration, there is a central low attenuation uh, that corresponds to uh, necrosis and a peripheral rim-like enhancement corresponding to uh, the vascular rim of the inflammatory granulomatous reaction. In most cases, there are no sequelae. In one third of cases, we can observe a calcified granulomas that may be associated with regional calcified uh, lymph nodes. Despite a specific uh, um, development of an immunity, um, it very frequently there are dormant viable bacilli that survive. This is called latent TB infection. In case of inadequate immune response, there is a progressive pulmonary TB. We won't talk about this form. Post-primary tuberculosis mainly occurs as a reactivation, uh, especially encountered in periods of immunodepression, malnutrition and debilitation, or as a result of aging. Five to 15 percent of all infected patients may be concerned, and most frequently it will occur in the first two years after exposure. Reactivation TV may occur in patients previously immunized by the BCG vaccine. Rarely, a true reinfection may be responsible. A 
progressive extension of inflammation of necrosis is observed, and frequently, communication between airways and cavity uh, formation is seen. There are cavities of viable size and viable thickness, and this uh, will uh, lead to an endobronchial spread of necrotic bacteria that may involve uh, the same or the overlap. Endobronchial spread of TB is characterized by dense micronodules with sharp borders that uh, are located in a supra, uh, that um, respect the supraoral area and are responsible of trim bud appearances. This corresponds to caseous necrosis and granulomatous inflammation, filling and surrounding respiratory and terminal bronchioles and alveolar ducts. Progressively, there is an involvement of uh, um, alveoli, peripheral alveoli, that results in a sublobar and subsegmental involvement. The hallmarks of post-primary TB are therefore alveolar consolidation of viable size, cavitation, and trim bud appearances that are mainly located at the apical and posterior part of the upper lobe, as well as at the apical segment of the lower lobe. Faced with indeterminate micronodules, maximum intensity production is very useful because it allows to perfectly detect and see the uh, centrilobular micronodules with twin bud appearances, once again, not a respect of the supraural area, characteristic of centrilobular location. Remarks. Um, traditional imaging concept of primary and reactivation TB have been recently challenged. And studies based on genotyping um, microtuberculosis isolates have proven that the time from acquisition of infection to development of clinical disease did not reliably predict the radiographic appearance of tuberculosis. The only independent predicting factor was the integrity of the host immune response. It appears, therefore, that predominant ganglion link forms uh, concern immunocompetent patients as for contact or immunosuppressed patients. Of course, these uh, necrotic flame dots have a differential diagnosis, including fungal disease, metastatic lymph nodes, and lymphoma. Predominantly cavitary forms mainly concern immunocompetent patients, and disseminated forms mainly concern severely immunocompromised patients. Uh, we won't talk about pleural pericardial airway involvement as well as tuberculosis, tuberculoma or extrathoracic involvement. The aspect uh, in immunocompromised patients um, will be developed um, after this talk. A few words about malaria disease. Malaria disease corresponds to hematogenous dissemination of viable bacilli. Once again, there is a differential diagnosis, mainly um, related to um, a metastasis, and in an immunosuppressed patient, viral infection or fungal infection. The aspect on CT is a mixture of sharply and poorly defined micronodules with a typical random distribution. Not here, the micronodules along the fissure that are never seen in bronchogenic distribution. These uh, micronodules may be of variable profusion and they may, they may be responsible of acute respiratory distress in this, as is in patient with fever. Not once again the micronodule along the, fish, uh, the pleura here, uh, typically uh, encountered in uh, miliary disease. Uh, faced with an apparent limited number of nodules, once again, there is a great aided value of maximum intensity projection. You can see here the widely, widely distribution of these micronodules with random distribution. This is characteristic of a hematogenous distribution biliary disease. Now we move on to non-TB mycobacterial infections. 
there is a propensity to non-TB mycobacteria to cause lung disease. This, uh, there is a great uh, variation. This is uh, mostly conditioned by host factors. And it uh, it's usually occurs from environmental sources, including soil and water. Uh, these infections are increasing worldwide, especially Mycobacterium avium complex. Three main prototypical patterns may be seen. First of all, upper lobe cavitary tuberculosis-like disease. The second one is nodular bronchiectasis. And the third one is hypersensitivity lung disease. The first form is the classical appearance. It may simulate upper lobe tuberculosis. It is mainly uh, secondary to Mycobacterium cancersi xenopi and Mycobacterium avium complex. It's less common and more indolent than tuberculosis. It mainly uh, concerns males um, more than 50 year old with pre-existing pulmonary disease, um, especially COPD, as was the case in this patient, but also bronchiectasis, or patient with prior tuberculosis, or patient having an underlying immunologic disorder, including diabetes, gastrectomy, or neoplasia. The classical appearance uh, in fact, it uh, may be difficult to differentiate from TB because there is a great overlap in radiologic appearances. However, cavities on signs other than upper lot should suggest a diagnosis. Like in this patient, you can see here a cavity located at the level of the posterior segment of the lower lobe. Here is an example of uh, a classical form of uh, non-tuberculous uh, mycobacterial infection. You can see that uh, there are cavities associated with nodules. This is a typical presentation. Cavities are seen in 50% of cases. Uh, in most cases, they are adjacent to the pleura. They may be single or multiple, bilateral, and they frequently are smaller and more thin walls than uh, seen in TB. Um, Proal thickening may be seen uh, conversely, pleural effusion is rare uh, compared to TB. Evidence of progression on serial imaging studies is very important with respect to management decisions. It was the case in this patient that was proven to have a MAC infection. The other typical um, CT findings in MAC infection are bronchiectasis, centralobular micronodules, consolidation, nodules that may be cavitated. The non-classical form is the second one. It predominantly affects elderly women with no pre-existing pulmonary disease. It is typically uh, represented by mild bronchiectasis and sensory lobular nodules predominantly located at the level of the lingula and the middle lobe. This was an 82-year-old woman that presented with cough and without any fever. This is a typical aspect of MAC infection in its non-classical form, named as uh, lindy Wilhelmer syndrome. The third presentation of atypical mycobacteria is hypersensitivity pneumonitis that may be subacute or acute or may lead to fibrosis. It has been proven to be uh, related to aerosol of water, including household water, medicinal bath, um, pools, hot tubes, this is named the hot tube lung syndrome, or metal working fluids. This is uh, typically represented by ill-defined centrilobular nodules here associated with a cavity. This was surgically proven in this case. What is the role of the radiologist in the diagnosis of mycobacterial infection? For the radiologist, it's very important, uh, faced with these uh, images, to tell if they, if they could correspond to inactive disease with fibrosis, if they are stable or not. So it's possible to see linear bands, calcified nodules or not. Um, collapse, collapses, cicatricial collapses, bronchiectasis, cavities, uh, pleural uh, calcification, all these findings suggest inactive disease, 
but we also we must um, be very careful, especially in patients that require anti TNF alpha treatment, because uh, these represent uh, this may represent uh, latent TB infection. So it's very important to mention in the report of all patients when they are the KLI of a previous TB infection. Active disease should be um, proposed um, faced uh, to cavity uh, consolidation with sick uh, walls and, of course, centrilobular micronodules with stream bud appearances. This is very suggestive of active TB. But we must be very careful because faced with such centrilobular dense, well-defined micronodules with stream bud appearance, uh, it is a bronchogenic spread of TB. It has to be carefully differentiated from this type of uh, aspect that associate bronchiectasis with such um, centrilobular micronodules, because in this case, it was a patient with a chronic bronchiectasis in a case of cystic fibrosis, and uh, every each inflammation or secretion may give such an aspect. It's not related at all with um, pulmonary tuberculosis. So it's a very important differential diagnosis. Be able to differentiate bronchogenic spread from TB without any proximal bronchiectasis from chronic bronchiectasis that may be associated with such micronodules that are not related with TB. The use of post-processing tool is very, very important, especially maximum intensity projection, because it may help to recognize subtle anomalies that may be totally overlooked on native CT images. As you can see here, a miliary disease was um, uh, exquisitely demonstrated in this patient HIV positive, severely immunocompromised. It was not possible to diagnostic on the single slice alone. Maximum intensity projection help us also, of course, to uh, characterize the micronodular pattern. You can recognize here a typical malleary uh, pattern with a random distribution of micronodules, and it's, of course, totally different of this one with typically a train bed appearances that are exquisitely demonstrated on maximum intensity projection and that may be uh, not always very obvious on native slices. Minimum intensity projection may also be useful in characterization of cavities and bronchiectasis within the cicatricial uh, collapses. And uh, faced um, with hemoptysis, radiologists has, of course, an important role. It mainly uh, concerns patients with inactive uh, disease and with a cavitary and bronchiectastic residue, the radiologist should be able to easily diagnose an aspergilloma. He uh, should be um, uh, able also, of course, to describe hypertrophied systemic and non-bronchial uh, systemic arteries. He should also be able to recognize Rasmussen aneurysm but that may be responsible of massive hemoptysis. In terms of follow-up, uh, it's very important to uh, be able to follow the patient with complex cases. Uh, in these cases, one year after the end of treatment, you can see here a typical uh, mosaic perfusion pattern that was related to contractive bronchiolitis uh, as a sequelae of bronchogenic spread of uh, tuberculosis. On the other side, you can see here the um, consolidation of the left lung that... Uh, uh, was um, here represented by um, bronchiectasis, uh, secular, secular bronchiectasis. The radiologists should always be very careful to the possibility of immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome, especially concerning HIV-positive patients and their highly active antiviral therapy, but also immunosuppressed non-HIV patients. In this case... Uh, usually present um, the patient present fever. Uh, we may observe nodal in enlargement as well as worsening of pulmonary infiltrates. This is named a paradoxical worsening and it doesn't indicate an ineffic inefficacy of treatment. 
Uh, we must be also very careful faced with um, density, uh, tissular densities located along a calcified granuloma because it may represent an adenocarcinoma develop on healing. So we must always be very careful when analyzing this calcified granuloma and we have always to look around and to detect you know, some new uh, tissular densities as was the case in this patient. Finally, the radiologist should suggest non-tuberculous mycobacteria uh, faced with cavitation, bronchiectasis, and centrilobular micronodules. And once again, look at the aided value of maximum intensity projection. Uh, we were asked um, uh, for this patient if there was an increase or decrease of micronodules. It was absolutely impossible without maximum intensity projection. And here we were able to tell that there was an increase in the micronodules that uh, therefore indicates uh, increase of uh, the disease, progression of the disease. So uh, key points home. Um, better than describing a primary and post-primary or reactivation TB, it's better to talk about ganglionic, cavitary, or disseminated forms of tuberculosis. Uh, I hope I have uh, well demonstrated the usefulness of post-processing tools, especially maximum intensity projection. Uh, it may allow to detect and characterize micronodules. Don't forget to mention sequelae of TB in all cases. It's very important, especially for treatments that are undergoing immunosuppressive treatment. Don't forget to think to non-tuberculous mycobacteria faced with centrilobular consolidation, cavities, uh, especially located um, at uh, another location as the upper lobes, and always think to the differential diagnosis of uh, a necrotic lymph node, of course, and the differential diagnosis of miliary disease. Think also to uh, paradoxal uh, reaction um, and uh, uh, immunosuppressive treatment. Thank you for your attention. Thank <laughs> you.